one of the amazing things you're part of is the AI Institute for Artificial Intelligence and Fundamental Interactions. What's up with this institute? What, what are you working on? What are you thinking about? The idea is something I'm very on fire with, which is basically AI meets physics. And, um, you know, it's been almost five years now since I shifted my own MIT research from physics to machine learning. And in the beginning, I noticed a lot of my colleagues, even though they were polite about it, were like, kind of, <laughs> what is Max doing? What is this weird stuff? <laughs> He's lost his mind. <laughs> then, But then gradually, I... Uh, together with some colleagues, we're able to persuade more and more of the other professors in the, our physics department to get interested in this. And, and, and um, now we got this amazing NSF center, so 20 million bucks for, for the next five years, MIT and a bunch of neighboring universities here also. And I noticed now those colleagues who were looking at me funny have stopped asking <laughs> why I'm, what the point is of this because it's becoming more clear. And I really believe that, of course, AI can help physics a lot to do better physics, but physics can also help uh, AI a lot, both by building better hardware. My colleague Marin Soljacic, for example, is working on an optical chip for much faster machine learning where the computation is done not by moving electrons around and but we're moving photons around, dramatically less energy use, faster, better. Um, we, all can, we can also help AI a lot, I think, by having a, a different set of tools and a different, maybe more audacious attitude. You know, AI has, to a significant extent, been an engineering discipline where you're just trying to make things that work. Mm -hmm. and being less in more interested in maybe selling them than in figuring out exactly how they work and proving theorems about that they will always work, right? Yeah. Contrast that with physics. You know, when Elon Musk sends a rocket to the International Space Station, they didn't just train with machine learning, oh, let's fire it a little bit left, more to the left, a bit more to the right, oh, that also missed, let's try here. No, you know, we figured out Newton's laws of gravitation and other, and got other things and got a really deep fundamental understanding. Uh, and that's what gives us such confidence in in rockets. And my vision is that in the future, all machine learning systems that actually have impact on, on people's lives will be understood at a really, really deep level, right? So we trust them, not because some sales rep told us to, but because they've earned our trust. We can and really safety critical things even prove that they will always do you know, what we expect them to do. That's very much the physics mindset. So it's interesting if, if you look at big breakthroughs that have happened in machine learning this year, you know, from dancing robots, you know, it's pretty fantastic. I mean, not just because it's cool, but if you just think about not that many years ago, this YouTube video at this DARPA challenge where the MIT robot comes out of the car and face plants. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> How far we've come in, yes. in just a few years. Similarly, AlphaFold 2, you know, crushing the protein folding problem. We can talk more about implications for medical yes. research and stuff, but hey, you know, that's huge progress. I, you, you can look at the... Uh, GPT-3 that can spout off English text, which sometimes really, really blows you away. Yeah. Uh, you can look at the Google at DeepMind's uh, Mu Zero, which doesn't just kick our butt in um, Go and Chess and Shogi, but also in all these Atari games. And you don't even have to teach it the rules now. Mm -hmm. You know what? All of those have in common is, besides being powerful, is we don't fully understand how they work. And that's fine if it's just some dancing robots and the worst thing that can happen is they face plant, right? Or if they're playing Go and the worst thing that can happen is that they make a bad move and lose the game, right? It, it's less fine if that's what's controlling your self-driving car or your nuclear power plant. And uh, we've seen already that even though Hollywood had all these movies where they try to make us worry about the wrong things, like machines turning evil, the actual bad things that have happened with automation have not been machines turning evil. Mm -hmm. They've been caused by overtrust, 
in things we didn't understand as well as we thought we did, right? Even yeah. very simple automated systems like what uh, Boeing put into the 737 MAX, right? Yes. Killed a lot of people. Was it that that little simple system was evil? Of course not. But we didn't understand it as well as we should have, right? And we trusted without understanding. Exactly. That's we, the overtrust. We didn't even understand that we didn't understand, right? <laughs>